the lightest football boots ever made just got released. Their headline is 90 grams, only 412 pairs, and they're 412 euro. But this is Boot Wizard. Of course we've got a pair, and of course we're going to review them. What's up guys, James here from Boot Wizard Boot Reviews and today we are looking at the 90 gram Puma Ultra SL, making this the lightest football boot ever made. This is lighter than any of the previous Puma SL models and it's lighter than that famously light Adidas 99 gram Adi Zero, the one that for many, many years we've all spoken about as just the craziest thing to ever come out. Well, Puma have gone, done, topped it. We will of course get into all the details and find out how these actually perform in this review, but we wanna cover a few bases first off. So these are actually in collaboration with a Croatian hypercar company called Remac. I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, I'm being honest, I had no idea who this company was or what they did before these boots existed. And that is what this logo on the back of the boot is. That is the Remac Automobile logo. Now, with this collaboration, Remac make, car, make a car, their flagship model, their flagship hypercar that goes 412 kilometers an hour. This is an electric car, that's what they specialize in. So we got 412 pairs and they're 412 euro. Out the gate, let's get these on the scales. Do they live up to the 90 gram height? So many boots get released. Oh, these are 160 grams and it's just a lie. Let's find out. So these are a UK seven and a half and let's see what they weigh in at. Putting them on the scales, we have exceeded expectations at 89 grams for this boot in a size seven and a half. Now, it was advertised that the UK eight would be 90 grams, so it makes sense, it's slightly lighter, and they have delivered. And in hand, this is, this is ridiculous. This is so unbelievably light. It just, there's, there's just, there's nothing to it, like, so let's talk about the materials and performance. Remember to like the video, get subscribed to the channel, and here we go. So the Ultra SL, of course, shares the Ultra name. Well, they don't really have a great deal in common when it comes to the upper. The upper on the Ultra is this Matrix Evo upper combination of Aramid, Kevlar, woven yarns. This is, like, this is thin. This is ridiculous. So this is just a single layer of finely woven fibers. There's actually gaps in between the weave, which varies as you move around the boot. And then you've got very little in the way of coating or protection. You have a very, very fine kind of TPU plastic layer and then some additional protection that runs around the toe of the boot in order to stop sole separation, which is a huge problem with those Ultra SLs. It has far more in common with the namesake SL than it does with the Ultra. This is the Evo Speed Fresh, which is a boot I really, really, like this was an ever so slightly heavier variation of the evo speed which was designed for summer months with extra breathability and it has a liner on the inside with an ever so slight touch of padding 
not the case here. So they actually feel fairly similar. They have a similar texture on the outside. This has more of a plastic outer structure, whereas all of the structure of this boot is woven into the material pretty much. There's a little bit of extra thicker coating to try and keep you locked in, to try and keep the boot responsive, but it's, it's thinner than that. The, this is crazy. This is thinner than that. It's just one layer of material. You can basically see straight through it. And of course, that translates to a really, really thin, really, really barefoot touch on the ball. It's as barefoot and thin as you're going to get from any boot. And possibly, I might be saying this far too early, but possibly thinner than you're going to get on any boot ever, because I don't see how you possibly make this any thinner. There are two little design elements in the rear of the boot just here, and these are little windows, which are basically design elements that have been taken directly from the Remac car that has inspired this boot. It's an interesting topic to cover, which I strongly recommend going and checking out the Gaijin boot blog to have a look at, is to whether this is a partnership and a collaboration or a sponsorship. Have Remax simply sponsored this boot more than it being an actual partnership or collaboration? Because there's not very much Remax about this apart from a name, a small design detail, and some numbers. The only place you're likely to find any additional structure on the inside is in the heel. So you've got the heel liner here, which is a very thin synthetic suede with a tiny, tiny bit of padding. And then that particular, I suppose, support element kind of sticks out the top of the boot here, it gives you a little bit of extra height and runs down to support where the laces go so that you're not pulling directly through the upper onto or through the lace holes onto the upper. There's actually some support there for durability purposes. And it just keeps the whole thing that little bit more rigid. You'd have a big problem, I think, without it. But what that also means is they've kept the heel counter fairly low. This does not run up particularly high in the boot. I've done quite a good job of still giving you a heel lockdown or a half decent heel lockdown, despite the fact that the heel is there and then all the rest of that is, is a bit of additional structure given from a liner just to give it shape where the rest of the boot is just material. There's not a lot going on here at all. It's, it is soft, but soft's not the right word. It's just super flexible and super pliable. Um, it's not a soft material. It feels quite rough. It's fairly heavily textured, but that doesn't necessarily make it soft, even though it's super pliable. I hope that makes sense. An area where you do have more Ultra than SL is the central lacing portion. So this is actually a one piece upper, which we didn't get on the SLs. That's a two piece construction. The Ultra is one piece and so are these. There is a knitted area that runs up the middle of the boot, stretches out, and again, is gonna give you that bit better lockdown considering that the upper of the boot is really not gonna offer you that much outside of just trying to hug your foot shape as much as humanly possible. So a little bit of very thin stretching it in the middle doesn't do a huge amount, but it's probably more effective than that two piece that you got in the original SLs. A lot of the weight in any boot comes in the sole plate. So this is actually a fully custom sole plate, as in they've actually specifically made a sole plate for this boot, something that companies tend to try and avoid doing because it's actually very expensive to do, but they needed to shave off as much weight as possible and the ultra sole plate was not gonna cut it. Despite the fact, if you look at the stud pattern, 
in the front of the boot, it's actually almost identical. You still get the same shape, even though the studs do appear to be shaved down and a little bit thinner on the SL. And this support stud, the central support stud, is actually an oval as opposed to a chevron. Um, but the pattern as a whole is basically the same there. And then in the heel, the stud shape again is the same, but only two studs in the SL as opposed to four in the Ultra. So you're getting decent traction. There's not really a problem there. The thing you want to look out for, of course, is over flexibility in a sole plate that is crazy, crazy thin. They've made this as thin as possible. And I've got to commend them because I think they've actually done a really good job here. And not just the fact that I think this looks awesome. It's, it really looks like a color, like a chrome color change that should be on a racing car. So there is a bit of design element there. Now, again, going back to my SLs, it's got a very similar setup. This was three studs in the heel, two strengthening bars that ran up the middle of the boot to try and keep it as light as possible, but there's still some flex in the boot there because it is super thin. I would heavily compare that to what goes on here. You've got a decent spring back in the forefoot without being too crazy, because of course it's not going to be, because how much material can you put in there? You can't start putting in Alastar Carbotex inserts, but these two strengthening bars do a pretty good job of keeping the boot fairly rigid, but there is a decent amount of give there. Having said that, I have tried boots recently that are not designed to be this light that have more flexibility in their sole plates. The Magnetico Pro SL is an example that I give. That is crazy flexible, uh, more so than this boot, and this is a much thinner, much lighter sole plate. So I commend them for what they have done, but you're not going to get the most responsive sensation out of this boot, despite the fact the traction is going to be good. But when this is the point, I knew I was always going to get to this point in this video. I'm telling you about the boot and I'm telling you what's great about it and how they've managed to achieve all of these things with all of this modern technology, but I'm pointing out a problem with every single element. So problem one, you get the upper, it's super thin, your touch is barefoot, it helps it get to 90 grams, but there's very little structure there, the lockdown suffers and it's not going to be super responsive. It's probably not going to be super durable either. I can't comment on it. They haven't put a warning on it, but I think that's just marketing and sensibly so. But there's issues with an upper this thin to make a boot this light. The outsole, it's exactly the same. It's good traction. It's fairly good for what it does, but it's not as responsive. It's not as springy and snappy because they've shaved down weight to make it 90 grams. So you're getting the weight, but there's a lot of concessions that have to be made in order to achieve the weight. The next question is, is that worth it? Well, yes. Yes for me for two reasons. I'm way off track right now. We are, we are all over the place. But anyway, we're going to keep going. For me, yes, because this is a concept boot. And I really like concept boots. Boots that just take an idea and just go to the absolute maximum with it. Um, the, the Predator Archive from earlier in the year, is that the best boot that we have ever seen made? No, it's not even the best Predator. It's probably not even a top five, top six Predator in performance terms, but it's a concept and I think it's brilliant. And I think it's one of the best boots to be released this year for that reason. And I think this goes into a similar, if less impressive category, taking the idea of making the lightest boot possible and delivering. They've delivered something incredible and it's not the best boot ever, but it's a fantastic concept. And I love it when companies really take these things and just run with them and just like, let's get nuts. Maybe there's some kind of innovation in here, which is really going to allow Puma to do something special in the future. I think you have to try things like this. And I think releasing it in limited numbers is great. Do I think it's too expensive? Absolutely. But it's a concept boot. It's a boot for collectors. Very few people are going to be out wearing these, apart from idiots like me. 
All right, fit. So we get a little bit kind of screwy here because obviously the way the boot's made, the materials the boot is made out of affects the fit ever so slightly when you compare it to the Ultra. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll have seen me post up a side-by-side -side comparison of me wearing the Ultra SL and the Ultra and these seeming to come up big. Um, so my advice is this, if you do happen to want to go and pick up a pair of these to, that are in your size, whether you're going to play in them or not, is to probably check out going down half a size for from your regular Puma boots for two reasons. The first one being that despite the fact that this is so thin and light, there's actually a reasonable amount of room in the boot volume wise. Like it's not massively voluminous. It's not as much as the Ultra is, for example. But I do think there's a decent amount of volume, especially in the toe box here. So to get that to fit a little bit closer isn't going to be a bad thing. And I do think it runs slightly longer than the Ultra does. So my half size down advice is purely based on the idea of getting this boot to fit as close as possible, which is how I think this boot should fit. Because of the type of boot, this really should be kind of hugging your foot at all places, and it can do that because the upper is simply so thin and so malleable. Comfort-wise, being so light, these of course feel quite natural, and I always find it's difficult to make a boot uncomfortable when it's so light, but I also wouldn't express that these are comfortable boots because of course they're not. The insole, for example, is super, super thin. It doesn't even have that top layer, like a top coating on it. It's just pure foam. This also has, as well as the box, the number on it to show you what number out of the 412 you have. Mine being 380 out of 412. So are these fantastic football boots? No. If you're going to use them for a season, they're probably not worth spending the money on because they're 412 euros. But do I like them? Damn right, I like them. I like the concept. I like the execution. I like what Puma have done here. And I am a little bit biased because honestly, this is one of my favorite boots ever. Like it's a really fantastic boot and I'm delighted to see Puma bring back an SL version of their boots. Even if without question, there is a point, hold on. There is a point at which getting lighter boots leads to negative returns. So you get like a diminishing return, the lighter and lighter you go to a point where I feel like it flips and the boot actually gets worse and is worse off for being lighter. Now I know that having the lightest boot possible is like a big trend right now for people, for consumers. So they want the lightest thing. And I love that Puma have basically gone out and gone, hey, your 99 gram boots, we've got 90 gram boots. And anybody can say anything they like about whether Puma intended to do this or not, or whether they just set out to make a super lightweight boot. Bugger. I don't believe it one bit. They absolutely set out to break Adidas's record and deliver the lightest boot ever made. I will, I will go to my grave absolutely defending that point. I don't care who tells me anything different. But a general message to my viewers, to consumers, is don't get hung up on weight when you're buying boots. If you're picking up a boot that's 220 grams, which might even be considered slightly on the upper end of what a lot of boots are these days, 200 grams seems to be where a lot of companies are going, you might find that that's an absolute sweet spot for you. Something that feels good, that's, that's nice and structured, that fits your feet well, unless we are talking about boots that are maybe topping 260, 270 grams where they start to get heavy, I wouldn't really worry about it. And you can look at pros, look at Sergio Aguero. I had his boots on this channel, a pair of custom Aguero boots, way over 300 grams. The weight isn't gonna make a huge difference, but enjoy what Puma have done here. Enjoy the concept, enjoy the innovation, 
and I think while the Remac Association is unneeded and is a bit more of a sponsorship to get their name out there, which it absolutely has done, there's certainly Formula One vibes about this is my thoughts, where every year there's a tech race to see who can build the fastest car and come up with the best innovation and the newest innovation to either shave weight off, gain more horsepower. And I feel like that's what's happened here. Everyone else has gone for lighter boots and Puma have gone, well, we can do it, but we can do it better than you. And I love that. And I really like these boots. So I'm going to offer you a deal. If we can get 100 likes on the video, I will make a video of me out testing these boots on an AG pitch. I'll give you all the test details and I will potentially ruin my 400 euro boots just for you guys. Comment down below, let me know if you like these or don't, or if you've got any questions. I didn't even really cover the, the box and the presentation here because there was kind of a lot to talk about, but I'll make sure there are plenty, 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 plenty of images up. And of course, if you're not already, get subscribed because I might be playtesting these bad boys. All of these have pretty much got reviews and playtests. We have all the good stuff coming on Boot Wizard. So get subscribed like, comment, have a good day. <laughs> That's all from me. Have a good one. I'll see you soon.